Hey guys, it's KJ from the Scariest Movie Ever channel on YouTube. And this here is a subject I've been looking into for quite a while now and uh, found a lot of things I want to show you. Millennials are becoming witches. Now this isn't just some one-off story I found. What I found seems to be an epidemic, a phenomenon. America's next generation is ditching religion for witchcraft. I have a lot to show you here, and the whole reason for showing you this is so you will understand what level of spiritual warfare we are under. And as always, it's the hearts and minds of the young that are being attacked most fiercely. An October 2017 Pew Research Center Fact Tank report reveals that 56% of United States adults surveyed say it is not necessary to believe in God to be moral and have good values. So this number is up from the 49% figure reported back in 2011. Pew associates this increase with the continued rise in population of the religiously non-affiliated persons called nuns. The nuns describe themselves as atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular. However, Pew also says that these nuns reflect only a part of the changing attitude about God, morality, and values. Melissa Jane, owner of Brooklyn-based metaphysical boutique Catland, said she has seen a major uptick in interest in the occult in the past five years, especially among New Yorkers in their 20s. Continued Miss Paul, the store offers workshops like Witchcraft 101, Astrology 101, and a Spirit Seance. The store sounds like a mini Harry Potter Hogwarts school. Whether it be spellcasting, tarot, astrology, meditation, trance, or herbalism, these traditions offer tangible ways for people to enact change in their lives, she said. Jane explained why the millennials are turning to witchcraft to enact change in their lives. For a generation that grew up in a world of big industry, environmental destruction, large and oppressive governments, and toxic social structures, all of which seem too big to change, this can be incredibly attractive. We should not view the subject casually or lightly. Wiccans or witches take their religion very seriously. We should give it somber consideration. Wiccans are in fact anti-Christian. Their beliefs and practices undermine Christian belief, values, and morality. We must understand that witches view solid Bible-based Christianity as a threat. But even more, we must continue to see that the rise of witchcraft represents a grave sickness in our society. Wicca spirituality is a problem, yet few Christians speak out against the rise in witchcraft, which also reveals the ineffectiveness of today's Christianity. Christian leaders have lost both their backbone and their teeth. Charles S. Clifton, editor of the book Witchcraft Today, states, Some Christian clergy, no doubt, are convinced in their own minds that we are going to their hell in a handbasket, but they are courteous enough to keep the thought to themselves and not bother us with it. Desiring the praise of men and wanting to be politically correct, most clergy will not speak out against the craft. However, there is a voice willing to call the craft what it is, rebellion against the Almighty God. This beast system is pushing God out of the equation on the daily. Every week we're seeing more and more stories about this. Anything traditional, anything holy, any true worship of the Almighty, or any mention of Jesus Christ, you know, all of this stuff is being pushed out. So it should come as no surprise that this beast system hates the Almighty God. And we see this reflected in pop culture all the time. Here's one example from Family Guy. That's right, the guy in the beard and the robe is supposed to be the Almighty God, the Lord God. And here's another example right here, also from Family Guy, but this is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this here is the way he's portrayed. And this is one of the most popular animations of all time. And here's just another example, and this is from the TV series Preacher Season 2. And what you're looking at right here is the offspring, or the lineage of Jesus Christ. In this series, Jesus is a womanizer and a liar. He winds up having a child. And this right here is the current offspring, the lineage of Jesus Christ. And they literally have him portrayed as a retarded mongoloid. So, we should not be surprised when we start seeing more and more stories like this. Witchcraft is the perfect religion for liberal millennials. As the idea of a holy God, as the idea of a savior of humanity, Jesus Christ, as these ideas are pushed out, something's got to fill the void. 
So this comes from that same article, and if you ever want to search the articles that I put up in the videos, just take the headlines I show you and put it in the search engine and you'll find them. This here is from QZ.com. What ties together crystals, feminism, polyamory, lapsed Catholicism, and tarot cards? Besides being increasingly of the moment, they are all related to modern witchcraft, a movement that is being propelled out of the forest and into the mainstream. The hook-nosed, broom-riding, pointy-hat-wearing, cackling witches of yore have transfigured into hip, feminist, millennial women with slick websites and soothing advice on manifesting your dreams. Instead of a bubbling cauldron filled with eye of the newt, they're slinging essential oils seeped with wild herbs. And here's yet another headline, Why Millennials Are Ditching Religion for Witchcraft and Astrology. So many of us already have an understanding that any figure that's at the top of the Illuminati music industry, or these A-list Hollywood actors, you know, anybody who has influence these days are influenced by dark forces. And that's not just me saying that off the top of my head. Most of us understand this after researching these subjects for a very long time. You connect the dots, but more importantly, you look at the fruits of their labor. What is it that these people are promoting, typically? And typically it's something dark. If not blatant Satanism, now of course we have witchcraft. It's also very important to note the connection with feminism to witchcraft. This also goes back to the worship of the Mother Goddess, and I'll talk more about that in a while. But check this one out, Season of the Witch, Why Young Women Are Flocking to the Ancient Craft. Rapper Azalea Banks brought witchcraft back into the mainstream by tweeting, I'm really a witch. But women in the U.S. have been harnessing its power for decades as a spiritual but not religious way to express feminist ambitions. Let's take a look at this. So here's a few of Azalea Banks' tweets concerning this subject, and uh, I think it's interesting to pay attention here and see how much truth she's really giving us. Right here she says, I wonder if... Most of the black American Christians in the U.S. know why they are Christian. I wonder if they even consider for a second that before their ancestors came to the Americas, that they may have believed in something else. But really, it's all about magic. The most magical people are the ones who have to deal with oppression, because the non-magical are jealous. That's why Jews and blacks have been persecuted over and over again throughout history, because they have the most magic. All I'm trying to say is that black people are naturally born seers, diviners, witches, and wizards. We have real supernatural powers, and the sooner we all learn to cultivate them and access them, the sooner we can really fix this stuff. And in case you're wondering who Azalea Banks is, this right here is just one image from one of her music videos, but here she is standing in front of the Illuminati Pyramid with the all-seeing eye and even has the Owl of Minerva there as well, so this goes back to your mother goddess worship. So it's no surprise to me that she's a professing witch. Remember why it's so important to understand these symbols. I know it can be exciting sometimes to find this stuff, sometimes scary, but really none of that stuff matters. What really matters is these are the fruits of their labor. This is a manifestation of the energy that's managing these people. When we see these celebrities pushing these kinds of symbols, what it's really telling you is that, that is what they are controlled by. This woman is controlled by the beast, so it should come as no surprise that she's a professing witch. So the growing popularity of witchcraft is such a phenomenon that even the New York Times did a story on this recently called Season of the Witch. So this is coming from a witch that was actually interviewed for this article, and she says, I suspect that this assumption of chaos, the sense that institutions have failed and no one is in charge, helps explain the well-documented resurgence of occultism among millennials. Attempts at spellcasting are obviously not unique to today's young people. The Washington writer and hostess Sally Quinn just published a book in which she boasts about hexing the renowned magazine editor Clay Feltner, my former journalism professor, before his death from cancer. Still, magic and witchcraft have a renewed cachet, one that seems related to our current climate of political and cultural breakdown. This is a familiar pattern. Theosophy, the mother of all New Age movements, was founded in the 19th century as the discoveries of Charles Darwin undermined faith in Christian creation stories, which led some to abandon religion altogether. mysticism. 
the rise of occultism among the counterculture of the 1960s and 70s befuddled scholars who assumed that American society was moving toward ever greater secularism. The dominant sociological model of the time, a University of Chicago professor wrote in 1970, cannot cope with the new manifestations of the sacred on the college campus and in the communes where the collegians go where they flee from the campus. Today, too, technocratic rationality is losing its hold. Though youth culture occultism predates Donald Trump's presidency, Raquel believes the calamity of the election accelerated interest in witchcraft. Witchcraft itself has certainly gotten political. Every month, thousands of witches, neo-pagans, and other magic practitioners virtually join together to cast a binding spell on Trump so that he may fail utterly, that he may do no harm. And in parentheses it says that pop star Lana Del Rey has participated. So of course we go look up images of Lana Del Rey, and this is just one of many I found. There are tons of images of Lana Del Rey putting forth once again the very common now Illuminati symbolism, or satanic symbolism. And in this one right here, of course, she has the black cross on her forehead, but more importantly, the eyes are completely blacked out. And typically, this shows a full-on possession. So this story alone is just another example uh, showing you the rise in popularity of witchcraft. Doreen Valiente, the fascinating story of the mother of modern witchcraft. So just around a year ago or so, they created a new exhibition for this lady and all of her work in England. And let's take a quick look at her here. And this right here is an image of Miss Valiente. And here's just another example of the new modern face of witchcraft, why Salem's modern-day feminist witchcraft scene is giving rise to magic tourism. So at this point, you get the basic idea here, and you can see that there really is a resurgence of witchcraft all around the world. So now that you understand this concept, let's take a look at some of the ramifications of the growth of these dark arts. Here's a story right here, a surge in number of child abuse cases involving witchcraft accusations. Speaking of which, let's take a look at some of these crimes here. Twelve real crimes involving modern day witches and witchcraft. This is from Ranker.com. Angela Sanford was charged for the 2010 murder of Joel Leva, who she lured to the Sandia Foothills Open Space Park in New Mexico. Sanford told Leva to take off his clothes at the park, and after partially undressing herself, she straddled him before stabbing him over a dozen times. Leva suffered 14 stab wounds in the head and neck, as well as many in the stomach, from a dagger intended to be used in Wiccan rituals. Wiccans distanced themselves from her actions, saying that the dagger, called an athame, is intended to be used as a ceremonial, symbolic item in nonviolent rituals. While going through Sanford's cell phone, police found Leva's number programmed under the word sacrifice. Lawrence Harris of Iowa was sentenced to life in prison for the murders of his stepdaughters Kendra and Alicia Suing. The two girls were found stabbed and strangled inside their home, and Harris claims that the girls died when he cast a spell to protect their brother. According to him, the spell reversed itself, which led to their deaths. Alicia Suing's blood was discovered on Harris's hands and body as well as on a long knife that Harris referred to as his ritual knife. The knife was found placed inside his spell notebook. Harris's attorneys tried to prove insanity on his part, but the jurors found Harris guilty of two counts of first-degree murder. Wayne Hartung Sr. of Pensacola, Florida was arrested for the murders of three of his family members in 2015. Von Sile Smith and her two sons, Richard and John, were found dead during a welfare check at their home. Authorities state that all three bodies had slit throats and had been badly beaten with claw hammers. Richard Smith was also found with a gunshot wound in his head. Family members state that Hartung dabbled in the practice of witchcraft and kept at least one Wiccan book in his office. Authorities claim that the evidence they gathered leads them to believe that witchcraft was involved in the ritualistic deaths. The triple homicide also occurred near the night of a blue moon, which carries important symbolic significance in witchcraft and only occurs once every three years. Renia Kottner, Jenny Wolf, and Oscar Eck of Illinois were all charged in the stabbing death of Bennett in 2005. They were also charged alongside Misty D. Gangloff with the conspiracy to murder Lindsay Kassinger. 
According to testimony, the conspiracy to murder the pregnant 16-year-old Kassinger was intended to save them all from a hex, a hex that Kottner convinced them they were under. Eck admits to messing with witchcraft for over a year after developing an interest from vampire and Harry Potter movies. Gengloff denied an interest in witchcraft, but admitted to owning books on the topic and pushing pens through a doll many times a week in order to relieve pressure. The group allegedly participated in a seance where they were told to murder Kassinger and her unborn child. Three days before August 23, 2005 slaying of Bennett, Eck said he participated in a seance with Kottner and David Linder, a fourth suspect who died on February 28, 2006 of gunshot wounds he received during the alleged home invasion that resulted in Bennett's death. He said he was led to believe that his own family and friends would die if Kassinger and her baby lived. Eck said Kottner interpreted the flickering of candles during the seance. She said Kassinger and the baby must die and anyone else in the house must be hurt, Eck testified. In 1996, Diana Hahn abducted Sherry Daly in a Target parking lot in Ventura, California. Hahn then drove her rented Nissan Altima to a remote canyon where she killed Daly. Hahn, previously an aspiring actress and model, used that experience to dress herself as a security guard before approaching Daly. Hahn also dabbled in witchcraft. She shared her plans to kill Daly with a co-worker, stating that she wanted to make a human sacrifice as a birthday present for a friend. This friend was Michael Daly, the married man she had been seeing for two years. Han wanted to sacrifice Michael's wife, Sherry, as a gift for his birthday. Kara Williams Covert and her boyfriend, Del Farcar of Ventura, California, were accused of the shooting murder of Larry Roger Fisk in 2009. Originally, the murder was chalked up to jealousy on the part of Farcour. However, a journal found inside the Palm Springs condo where Fisk was murdered revealed the plans for a strange dual murder with a satanic basis. Within the journal, Williams Covert referred to herself as a witch, and Farquhar called himself a true demon. The pair claimed that the journal simply contained a horror movie script. In the script, Farquhar played a character named Dave Hatcher, a transsexual in an open relationship with a witch named Cat. Williams Covert played Cat, a meth addict who lured men to their condo for sex. Prosecutors believe Williams Covert was acting out the script when she allegedly lured the unsuspecting victim back to the condo to his eventual death. Based on the journal, prosecutors alleged Williams Covert tried to lure a man back to the condo on Halloween 2009 but failed, and that Fisk was killed on Friday the 13th. Joseph Calla II is serving a 30-year prison sentence for the murder of his 79-year-old mother, Lydia Calla, in 2001. Kala admitted to beating his elderly mother to death before cutting open her body and removing a few of her organs. One officer on the scene testified that he saw Kala naked and bloody through a bedroom window. He was standing over a mutilated body, eating what looked like an organ. That organ turned out to be Lydia's heart, and teeth marks where a piece was missing. Kala, who has battled schizophrenia for decades, claims that he was overcome by the spirits of witches who made him commit the violent acts. Other officers who came upon Kala at the crime scene state that he was talking about worshipping the devil and that he accused them of interrupt sacrifice. Canadian Cheryl Dell received a life sentence for murdering her husband, Scott Dell, in 1995. It had been estranged for four years when Cheryl gave Scott a bottle of wine laced with antifreeze as a gift. She later stayed on the phone with him for nine hours to coax him into drinking the entire bottle while while the antifreeze is what ultimately killed Scott, witchcraft is believed to have been a major tool in regaining his trust. According to Nancy Fillmore, one of Cheryl's lovers, once Scott left her home, Cheryl got out her witchcraft books and lit candles before vocalizing weird rituals or prayers or whatever. Other testimonies at the trial claim that Cheryl Dell performed bizarre rituals on a homemade doll that resembled Scott Dell. The doll had pins in it and eventually Cheryl buried it. Nancy Fillmore died in 1997, soon after her testimony. Her apartment was set ablaze by a young teenage boy whom Cheryl had seduced into murdering Fillmore. Heather Miller was convicted of attempted murder, solicitation to commit murder, and aggravated and simple assault in 2000. The victim was her own husband, Kevin Miller. Before considering murder, however, Heather tried to push her husband from her life with black magic. When that wasn't effective, she made a plan to poison Kevin's lunch each day with belladonna, 
also known as Deadly Nightshade. The downfall to Heather's plans was telling her neighbor, Mindy Robbins, who alerted the police. Apparently, the two women had a sexual relationship and had bonded over a shared interest in witchcraft. In 2016, Sarah Gilbert murdered her own mother in her New York apartment. Sarah's mother, Mary, had apparently been involved in the occult since she was a teenager and her children had been severely affected by her practices. While it isn't clear whether or not Sarah practiced witchcraft herself, she claimed to experience delusions involving witches and demons. Sarah struck her mother with a fire extinguisher and stabbed her several times with a 15-inch kitchen knife because she believed that her mother was a demon. An unidentified Texas woman had Denton officers dispatched to her home in 2015 after her husband called the police. He claimed that his wife was having a psychotic episode and that she had murdered their cat. When police arrived, the woman said she was hearing voices. She also claimed to be a witch and admitted to killing her cat so she could eat it because it was a demon. The dead cat had been disemboweled and could be seen in a skillet on the stove. Eric Christensen had been found guilty of first-degree murder in the 2010 slaughter of his girlfriend, Sherry Harlan. He claims he had to kill her after she broke what he states was a blood oath to. It is believed that Christensen cut out Harlan's sexual organs and dismembered her body entirely. Her skull was found inside of her burned car, and other parts of her body were found stuffed in garbage bags and scattered about wooded areas. He threw some body parts into brush alongside the roads and over embankments. Christensen was livid after finding text messages between Harland and another man, and he felt as if he had to kill her because she couldn't adhere to the occult oath that bound them together. In the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible, it tells us there's nothing new under the sun. Everything works in cycles, and same thing applies right here. They're putting a pretty face to witchcraft now. They're making it hot. They're making it hipster. They're making it cool. But I wanted to share those stories with you just to show you the very worst aspects of this movement. No matter how pretty some of these people come off, no matter how attractive, no matter how cool or hip, none of that matters. It's basically the same concept as polishing a turd. They can make this seem hip, they can make it seem cool, they can make it seem sexy, but it's still the same thing. Incredibly dark in its origins. Service to Satan, as opposed to service to the Almighty God. We find more stories like this. And remember, it really is all about the children. It's about the youth, it's about purity, it's about innocence being distorted, being perverted being taken away. Possessed teenagers found babbling incoherently after being driven mad by satanic WhatsApp messages. Another subject I cover a lot here on the channel is how our modern media, you know, movies, TV shows, commercials, they reflect a lot of dark realities that are actually taking place right now all around the world. This image right here is from American Horror Story Cult. It's the newest season. It just ended recently. And the image over on the left side is the final image of the series. So this actually harkens back to one of the articles I was reading earlier when it was talking about Trump. Like once Trump won, you saw all these witches organizing, right? To battle against him, to cast spells. So the whole season of American Horror Story was basically about that very premise. It was all about how different cult factions formed after the Trump election. But what you find out at the very end of the series is that the cult that wins is a cult of witches. Throughout the series, they talk about the power of feminism mother goddess worship. So this entire series was really giving a nod to the rise of witchcraft, the rise of witches, and also how they are secretly in control, how they're all powerful. So I'll leave you with that, guys. I shared with you everything I wanted to show you. It's been a subject I've been very interested in here recently and doing a lot of research on. It's always important to expose evil for what it is, but we have to have answers. The only answer I can come up with and that I've had for many years in my own life is a personal relationship with your Heavenly Father, the Lord God, through Jesus Christ. 
This is a spiritual battle we're embroiled in. It's very real. It's happening now, and it's spreading. So if you don't know God, if you don't know Jesus Christ, I beseech you to uh, seek him out now, because this is the only protection you can have in this kind of a spiritual warfare. It'll also give you the eyes to see this stuff much more clearly. So I'll leave you with that, you guys. Once again, I thank you very much for watching the video. Uh, take care of yourselves out there, all right? And I'll be back real soon with more.